Are you ready? This is Should D, the existential journeyman grappler. I love a lot of things, but I love wrestling. You love wrestling. We love wrestling. And that's a show enough right on. What you say now, Chuck? We love wrestling. <laughs> that's a show enough right on. That's right. <laughs> the best one. <laughs> I heard you. I heard you talking about somebody's intro, so I had to. I had to. I had to. I had to match that. I had to meet or exceed. I heard you tweeting about somebody's intro. <laughs> well, y'all know what I always say. Let's hit that other intro. Kick okay. It. I love wrestling. Check this out. And you love wrestling. We love wrestling. Watch that shit, bitch. I'm even rapping. My name is Naomi. If I love wrestling, you love wrestling. Then we love wrestling. 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 Yeah, I told you. Oh, we love wrestling. Ooh. A nice, sexy intro. We back. We back. Production values. Production values. You gotta love it. You here. We had another We Love session with people we love to see doing what they doing out here in the wrestling ring. This man right here, we had to have him here. These past weeks, y'all been hearing everybody big him up as a mentor to him. Somebody they want to talk to. Probably somebody who's going to be in our top 10 storytellers, and he's not going to be in the bottom five. Not even in the bottom seven. Pressure. Might not even be the bottom Y'all know what I'm saying. The browse from this man everywhere. We really got him here because the summer he have it and the year that he be having. We have Mr. Shug Dunkerton. How are you doing today, sir? I'm 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 out here. I'm I am i am i am out here doing what I could do. Um now nah, I'm I'm having a laugh about how you the intro because uh you know one of my favorite rappers, guy uh God rest his soul is MF Doom. And uh I think somebody was comparing me to that the other day but i guess that's like a bigger conversation or whatever it is um i always joke around about being like the mixtape status wrestler you know there's <laughs> there's there's rappers where it's like it, you gotta like rappers love that rapper it may not necessarily be like the mainstream or everything knows but it's like if you love rap you love this rapper so like i feel like and as far as wrestling goes i'm trying to be in that lane like a, a mf doom like a most deaf you know, things of that nature where it's like rappers love rappers. Jay Dilla, you know, rappers love these rappers. So thanks. I appreciate that. You put a lot of pressure on me to start, man. <laughs> There's no pressure on you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just, you know what? Before we get into it, because yeah. we brought Shug here because we've been doing a lot this year. Um, and I don't feel like he's been talked about enough, but we got to get the first question out the way. We had him on at the Beginning of 2021, but some audio issues, so I'm going to ask the question again. Okay, sure. So, Shug, why do you love wrestling, or what started your love for wrestling? Uh, Got to gotta show love to the VHS tapes, the, the, the BASF six-hour uh, <laughs> extra long play tapes. You 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 got to show love to those. I, I'm never gonna let nobody talk bad on the BASF. But, um, no, nah, if it weren't for those VHSs, um, like real talk, I still have those VHSs in like my uh my little my little DVD movie room in the other room, but like those VHSs had like everything at the time because we were like a military family, so they had wrestling pay per views, they had cartoons, they had all that stuff. But usually towards the back end of it, there was always like a pay per view. WrestleMania Five was like my first intro to all of it, and since then I've been stuck. And like I love the the colorfulness, the theatricality, the the stories, all of it. And I always knew, even from an early age, watching those, that I didn't know how I was gonna be involved in the business. I just knew I was gonna be involved in it. And then here we are, like all this time later. Yes, it's, what, it's crazy. I was a I was a tape trader. Uh, <laughs> what was the golden tape for you to get? You talking about like what was like a holy grail tape for me? Yeah. It's got to be Spring Stampede 1999. That one had DDP's first title win. That had that crazy, uh, I think it was Blitzkrieg versus Hooven 2 Guerrero. It had that match on there. 
Like, uh, like that that show just had everything on there. Like, it was just awesome. And then I think the the other one that was like a really big get for me, and I used to be I used to be big on hitting up the rental places uh, whenever they had pay per views. Um, mm-hmm. I needed a clear, full copy of Survivor Series 1989. Because I had a I had a recorded copy, but it was only the last two matches. I had to see everything. I wanted to see it from beginning to end, and then it, it was it was everything I hoped it would be, and then some. It was great, except for Coco Beware getting eliminated. I ain't like that. I ain't like that. Coco, Man, they ain't put love on Coco. I ain't like that. Shout out to Coco. He was just up in Minnesota a little bit ago. Just a man, like a uh, pioneer. Like nobody was doing it like him at the time. Right. Check. Yeah, check out Coco Beware at uh, Memphis Champ at Memphis Championship. <laughs> y'all, y'all, and if y'all go check out Coco Beware, I mean, check out the matches. Check out the matches, like him and Rick Martel at WrestleMania three. That's one of the best openers I've ever seen in life. You know, he got the he got the cart going. Excuse me for rubbing my eyes. Like I've I've been looking at screens all day, so like I'm, I'm just forgive me on the audio element, but um, excuse me the video element, but um. You know, aside from just having the cool entrance with Pile Driver, you know what I'm saying? He waving, he got the little mechanic, the mechanic ring ringing him down. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of which, before I get into the Coco story, I really want to get into. Um, shout out to Coco for singing Pile Driver like a real soul musician back in the day, because <laughs> you knew the song was gonna be on point if he called his girl in the song "Woman," not "Woman." You gotta be like "Woman." You gotta say it like that, and and pop out and pop to him. Because he went through there and he's like, it sound like an argument. It sound, and said that with his whole chest. I know somebody was like, Coco, um, the word is argument. Are you sure you don't want to re-record it? I know what I said. I said it like, like, play it back. It sound like an argument. Sound, it don't get no it don't get no better. Coco was that dude. Um two Coco things. The first one. Go and watch that Coco video of him and whoever that mass dude was in the territories. The, 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 that was the first Coco Beware squash I've ever seen in life. I know you know what I'm talking about. It's the one where Coco just straight slap beat that man into dust and then give him like a no assist. Just, ah, just, just. <laughs> and he sent that dude to the shadow realm, dude. It, it was crazy. Like, I've never seen. I've never seen Coco go off like that before. I don't know. Like, it was literally a boondock situation where it was like, what did he say to this man to make him that mad? Two minutes. It's the hardest two minutes you ever see in your life. Two minutes. It was in a, wasn't it in that, the, the, the old end of the studio. 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 You know? <laughs> I was like, man, he just, okay, Coco, you know. That man paid for his sins. Pay for his sins that night, like Lord. Um, the second Coco story. This is my favorite Coco Beware story ever, and this is uh, this is Sal Renaro's story. So this is after uh his house burnt down. So the original Frankie ended up dying in that fire. So Sal Renaro is wrestling Coco Beware at NWA main event, and he's sitting down with him. He's like, "Hey man, Coco, I've been hearing about you know all the stuff that's going on with you and everything. I'm sorry about losing Frankie." He's like, "Yeah, my brother, you know, it's, it's it's just been rough. It's just been a time and everything like that. But I'm I'm out here. I'm trying to I'm trying to forget tonight, man. I'm just trying to make something special tonight with you. So what you trying to do, young man?" And they get to talking and they sorting stuff out and all that good stuff. So then they go out there. Coco get the mic. I just want to thank y'all. For, for supporting me and, and 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 holding me down. You know, Tennessee is near and dear to my heart. And um as y'all know, I lost I, I lost Frankie in a house fire. And um, you know, I still find my way to be here tonight, but there's something I gotta tell y'all, and I just gotta get this off my chest. He the one that started the fire and points right at Sal. Right at Sal Renaro. Yeah. <laughs> not the quote, not the quote little Boosie. That quote, Lil Boosie. This is one of my favorite Boosie quotes I've ever heard. I don't condone what Boosie do, but he got some funny lines. When I tell you Coco whooped his ass for like a straight hour, like, like, like he beat the pants off of Sal Renaro. Like, Sal, like, Sal knew because the heat was just, as soon as he said he was the one that did the fire, and, and like, you know, they believed Coco. Coco could have said anything and they would have believed him. And 
Sal couldn't do nothing. So whatever they planned or whatever they talk about, it was a wrap. He just got his ass beat for like the whole match. He apologized to him after. But can you imagine like being across when all that's going on? All of Tennessee hates you. You can't you can't get no offense. I can't run my spot on Coco Beware after I just got accused of burning his house. I mean No, 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 no. He looked like he could beat some somebody down, so Oh yeah. Oh yeah, Coco had it like that, man. He was that dude. <laughs> oh man, Maddie, you got it. <laughs> I pop for that story every time. I pop for it every time. It, it never gets we, old. I don't know how we can get through these questions. That's so funny. <laughs> oh yeah, Maddie got some questions for you. Oh, oh, okay. I got, I got some moments to talk about after her, but you know. <laughs> All right, Maddie Rock. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Get to me. So, Shug, um, thank you for taking this time. I've been wanting to talk to you for a minute. Um, I told Trey a long time ago. Yes, yes. So, I don't know if you can tell what I watch in the back. <laughs> this old AW. <laughs> well, okay. That, okay. That's the Indies up there. But, All right. Um, oh, I see the figures. They lined up. Okay, I, they had attention. All right. He's yeah, pro AEW. They are, yeah. Hold on, hold on. Let, let's not do that. You talk about the pro AEW. See, it, it be sounding too much like, like I watch wrestling so I don't have to think about politics. And like, even though there's politics in wrestling, and now it's like everybody got a political party. Or like, are you you a part of AEW party? Are you part of WWE party? Are you the independent party? Like, what's going on? I just like wrestling, man. I just yeah. like wrestling. Like, and that is what I tell people on even my podcast. I tell people watch what you like. Because there's something for everybody. So Absolutely. It just happened to be what I'm watching now. I used to watch WWE growing up, but okay. I stopped for like a good 10 years. And then I happened upon a Chris Statlander match. And I was like, women can wrestle like this these days? And so oh, yeah. it came, and that's how I got back into it. But that's when I saw you the first time on AEW. So, oh, yeah. Yes. But I've, I've gone through your stuff and you have a pretty impressive... You're a veteran. You've been around for over two decades, and I don't think a lot of people know ooh, that. Two, ooh, it's the way it's two decades. Ooh. The, way it's not- <laughs> the way you brought it out, like Maddie. <laughs> Should I try this? No, it's just like I already be having old man in the club syndrome already sometimes in the locker room, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I be hearing them call, like, like I'm, I'm not trying to be that guy. I be hearing them call the matches sometimes. I'll be like, you know, I just be over here, like, hey, young blood, um, uh, you know what I'm saying? You want, you want to slow down on that real quick? And everything, like, you, you know, you want to do the duck and the toss? You, you might want to do the flip line. You know what I'm saying? You just, 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 just slow down. And if you think you're going too, if you think you're going too slow, slow down. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm, I'm signing like that. You know. It's okay. Oh, I, I might be older than you, so. So you ain't old. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Well, I wanted to know, um, after so many years wrestling, like, what is the most important lesson that you've learned? Like, what is something, what is, what, what is he showing? There's a Heroes and Legends poster. I've done that. Sh- I, I did that show. Oh. There, there it is. There I'm a little is. blind, so I'm, that's why my face is like, oh. That's what you did. <laughs> 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 not the auntie facebook photo like let me how i work this thing how i work this thing that's how she was in the camera for those of you without the video component that that was hilarious man that, that was good but uh so so your so your question is what is like my biggest lesson like like biggest lesson yeah like what is something that you wish somebody would have told you when you oh god uh that's that's all the advice i give sometimes because you know uh mistakes mistakes are a hell of a teacher uh sometimes but um the two things the two things that i probably would go off of um i i gotta do two i have to do two um one make sure that you make if you decide that you're going to get into this business if you choose to get into this business you have to make sure that your foundation is rock solid when i started i didn't have a very good foundation in terms of where i started um, I mean, I'm thankful because I wouldn't have found my way in, but I can't say it was like the most solid way of getting in because there was a lot of stuff that I didn't like. I mean, I learned how to bump. I learned how to do some stuff here and there or whatnot, but I didn't get put up on game about how to carry myself in the locker room, um, how to negotiate for yourself, uh, gimmicks, 
things of that nature. Damn. So I spent like a lot of years. That's why like it's tough when I hear that number sometimes. Like you hear two decades because it's like because <laughs> no because there was a lot of time that was wasted because I just didn't know what I was doing, and um you know nobody was was willing to help. A lot of the times, um, especially in the entertainment business, um, some would even say dating. Uh, they want the fi they want the finished product. You know what I'm saying? Like they want they want the product, not the potential. That's 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 why Michelle got her an Obama. You know what I'm saying? Because she, she she no, I'm dead ass. Because she was with him when it was it was the potential, not the president. And, and she stuck by that. She 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 invested until he became a president. Now she get everything. Um. But a lot of people like to see the, the product first. And I was far from a product um, around that time. And the thing is, it was just easier for people who were in position or who had good advice to just say you ain't shit or you're sorry or this, that, and the third and just write it off. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until maybe about six, seven years in that I really had somebody sit me down in Dr. David Raines who was like, okay. You suck, but here's why you suck. And then I took the notes and applied, and then I stopped sucking at the same things, and then I got better, and then we we learned and we built upon that. So when I talk about who my trainers are, um, Dr. David Raines, Jeremy Vane, Murder One, and all three of them are very important in correcting a lot of stuff that went wrong for those few years. And it bothers me a lot because I think back – and I think about what I could have did if I had six or seven more years. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If I could have got rebated that time with the foundation that I got from the three of them, yeah. ain't no telling what I could have did. But I have what I have, and I have to work with that. I have to work with the hand that I've been dealt. The mm -hmm. other thing that I have to tell you is, um, especially with wrestling, a lot of people will make the mistake of trying to get ready for an opportunity when it presents itself. Do not try to ready yourself for the opportunity you need to be ready before the opportunity ever 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 arrives and that was definitely a mistake on my part um more than a few times um you got to be the product before it gets there and then when it comes through it's like i know it's a lot of pressure but then it just becomes easy work because it's like I've been working the camera. I've been had an interest. I've been had a gimmick. I've been know how to work the promo. I already know what my moves are. They um I already know what phrases I'm going to use. I know what gets over for me. I know, you know, what works and what doesn't work for me instead of trying to figure it out during all these high pressure situations. Mm -hmm. So, those are my two big things. That's excellent. Yeah. That's excellent. Um <clears throat> jumping into it. Hindsight 2020, I guess. Hindsight and that's that's all of us, I think, um, in our lives. When we get to a certain place in our lives, I think we feel we look back and we're like, "Damn, if I could have done this differently." But all you can do is move forward. You know? Yeah. You can, <laughs> you can only go forward. So <laughs> I, 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 I I put that and um, I put that and uh, there's a reason for everything in my two. They're very true, but I don't like hearing them yes. lines because like, especially that whole reason for everything. Nobody said it was a good reason. <laughs> it's probably a reason. Nobody said it's a good reason. You know, maybe, maybe you might want to give me a little cheat sheet, a little hint. You know what I'm saying? A little, remember Microsoft had a little paper clip in the bottom corner. I hit the little paper clip, find out what's going on, but okay. You know, <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. And I mean, I think that, you pick up and you learn from everything and you just get better and moving forward, you know? Like I look back and I'm like, I wish I would have found this love for wrestling when I was in my early twenties. Cause I think I would have jumped in to be a, <laughs> to be a wrestler. But now me, me being like that, that, the kind of cat that I am. Cause I talk about like a lot of existentialism and if I'm a, a philosophical cat and whatnot. I say all that stuff. I, I say all that stuff about, I wish I had that time and everything like that. But you know, if you didn't find it when you find it, it wouldn't it wouldn't feel like it feels now. You know what I'm saying? And if I didn't go through what I went through, I like I still think there's something to be done for me. Like I think there's still something left in the tank. I just have to keep kind of working these locks. And if if nothing opens up, it doesn't open up. But I could at least take solace in the fact that um, I could be the vet that I didn't have when I started out. That's usually my biggest thing. I don't want 
I don't want to keep that knowledge behind a, a gate that I wish somebody had dropped on me when I like absolutely needed it. Yeah. That's my biggest thing. If they want to learn and they, I see that they want it. Of course, I want to see them be able to go ahead and make it and like go as far as they possibly can go with it. You should write a book. Oh Lord, I, I don't know if I got the time. <laughs> no. A lot going on. A lot going on. You have so much to share. Um, I have a question because, you know, whenever I'm gonna interview anybody, I I do research even if I know about them because I like to find okay. out. So it ain't no, it ain't nothing like that. It's just about all your different names. You oh God! You, <laughs> you talking about all them nicknames? You talking about all them damn <laughs> nicknames? All oh them names, Lord! Nicknames, they're so hilarious. Where did you come up with these? Did you come up with all of them, or some of them like people just happen to call you this, and then you're just stuck? Like, like I know um, Carl Wilson is from your name, but. Coco Rumble. Whoa, 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 who is that? Who is that? Who is who is that? What is that government that government name that's out there in the atmosphere? I don't know. I don't know, I don't know the car. I don't know no car. I don't know who that know is. Carl. Coco Rumble. Gino. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. There's there's a ton of stuff. Okay, so. Yeah, a lot of that stuff is trial and error because you know you 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 got to find yourself during that time. I had a long time, long time at it. Now a lot of the other nicknames that you'll probably see, I guess, since you looked in that profile, um, <laughs> like of course, of course, I'm not ashamed of it. I get I get the name, and the name has evolved over time. Um, from the movie Semi Pro, hilarious. Um, not enough people talk about it. I think it's one of the funniest ones in Will Ferrell's catalog, but we don't talk about it enough. But, um, like, of course, you know, and of course the character was Andre 3000. It had to be Andre 3000 because I think the, I think the world of him, but, um, his character had a different nickname every time you saw him. Like he would do a game, come back. He'd have a whole nother different name by the time. Like it was going, he, he, on, he was literally the definition of onto the next one before that song even came out. It was just like, like it was good for one use and then he's on to the next thing. So. I just wanted like five million nicknames, so I just kept coming up with stuff. And every time, um, every time I thought something was clean, I would just write it down or I would take a note of it, and I would just cycle stuff in and out, um, just to see what worked and what didn't work. Um, uh, I, I know he doesn't. I know we don't speak of him anymore because he's in the he's in the the shadow realm for things that he's uh, been spoken out about, but. Um, uh, a certain star man had already took the gimmick of like pretty much naming all his stuff off. So I was never going to be able to get into that when it was all said and done. But yeah. So yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I think one of your most popular, and of course I have to ask you because. Hello. Of course. Of course. Pineapple Pete. <laughs> was that like instantaneous? Was that something that Jericho just did? Or was that something that he did and then he said, hey, this is what I'm calling you? Or how did that happen? So, so okay. Man, we, we about to go all over the map with this real quick. So, I, I, I hope you don't readily have a question right away. Because, like, this, this is about to be a comedy slash tragedy slash, like, one of them Tarantino things where we're going to start from the end and come to the beginning and then come back around. Like, so just, just bear with me. Because I got to hit all the posts. I have to hit all of them. So... The thing with Pineapple Pete, Pineapple Pete is the the best worst thing that ever happened to me. I don't I don't mind saying that. I don't mean it in an ungrateful way. Like um, that was a really awesome bit. Um, you know, doing a bit as they say, like you do you doing a bit. I'm thankful for all of it. Mm -hmm. So um, the thing with Pineapple Pete, um, I knew what my goal was when that kind of caught flame. Um, and I remember, and a lot of people don't know this, and this is my first time saying this off screen. Um, I remember just having like a long, like, like hour and a half conversation with Cody Rhodes, um, a, like, like a week or two after that had happened. Right. Cody literally asked me like, what, what do you want? Like, what are you trying, what are you trying to do? Like, what are you trying to get out of the business? Right. And I told him flat out, I said, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't pretend to know what's going to happen. It could be one of those things where they just don't call me or they just stop texting me about something and it's over. I, I never under any pretenses treated this like I made it when it happened. Like uh, until I see a piece of paper in front of me, we ain't really made nothing. 
You know what I'm saying? We're just, we're constantly moving. We still move, right? Um, But I knew the main goal that I wanted is I wanted to last long enough. I, and at the time, of course, we didn't know how long the pandemic was going to be. Right. But I wanted to last long enough to be able to step out in front of an actual arena with people. Like, the most I've ever performed in front of, I think, is about, I want to say, like, 2,500. And that was over in England, like Alexandra Palace Progress. I've never, of all the things that I've done, I've done Currican Hall, I've uh, ECW Arena, you know, overseas, all that stuff like that. Of all the things that I've ever done, I've never wrestled in like an actual, actual arena, like an arena, like 11, like 8,000, 9,000, 10,000, you know what I'm saying? Like going crazy. I just want to know what it sounds like. I just want to know what it feels like. I just want to know what it's like to come down there, you know? And honestly, that was the thought that was giving me hope the whole time. It's like, I got to hang in long enough to be able to just, even if I just come out, even if I just come out. I just want to know what it sounds like and what it feels like. And obviously, no, I, di I didn't get that. So that hurts. It uh, it sucks. Not saying I won't ever get that. But um, at the time, that was the closest I ever came to that. That was a big learning experience because that's the closest I've ever been to being that in, in the locker room, you know? So the thing about it is for all the Pineapple Pete stuff and all the stuff that everybody talks about, mm -hmm. I'm aware that that was just a stroke of circumstances. And I'm very big on that because if there was no pandemic, they would have been in Rochester, New York the next week mm -hmm. where they would have had their first blood and guts. Mm -hmm. um, it's not that I didn't know people, but I wasn't on anybody's radar to get called up like, oh yeah, we got to get Suge in so we can get a look at him. You know what I'm saying? On dark. I don't think it was on anybody's radar. It was a lot of circumstance, you know, um, quarantine happened. They were only able to run Georgia and Florida. I was nearby. I was somebody that they can count on because at the time, I think QT Marshall was um, booking a lot of the extras. Yeah. I was helping guest train a lot when it was the one fall pack power factory back then. Mm -hmm. um, I think he knew how I got down. So it was one of them cases where it's like, hey, you want to come through? You want to do something? That's mm -hmm. when I did the first Florida one versus Kip Sabian. Right. Me and Kip go back from England. Mm -hmm. So we knew each other. We worked well together. He was like, I'm not going to go out there and eat your lunch. I want you to come back. And um, I appreciate him for that. I appreciate him being a friend when he didn't have to, you know. And uh, that went well. There was the emergency situation that happened where they had to move the taping from Florida to Georgia. I literally get a call at 3 o'clock. I, I get a, excuse me, not even a call. I get the WYD booty call text from QT Marshall at like 1 in the morning. <laughs> hey, what you doing? Can you be at can you be at the the power factory um for seven seven in the morning? I'm asleep. Hold on, I gotta hit the fat joke. Now mind you, <laughs> mind you, I'm asleep. So I don't I don't wake up. Something told me to just wake up. I don't know, something in my bones. Cause like I said, you have to see how many circumstances come along to get to what what you're talking about. That's why I'm I'm telling this story the way I'm telling this story. Yeah. So I happen to wake up at like four or five in the morning and I see the text from QT. So mind you, if I saw this at one, I could have been getting ready, got a bag together, all that other stuff like that. I'm seeing this at five in the morning. It takes two hours to get to Atlanta. Be there by seven AM. So I see it. I text him. All right, I'm gonna be there. I said, "Bet," because who who am I to say no, right? So I hurry up and throw some stuff together. Throw some stuff in the bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fortunately, my bag was like half packed anyway, so I got some stuff together. You know, watch <laughs> all this other good stuff like that, and then jump in the car. Thank God, it was it was quarantine because if he had got if if I got that text at five during normal circumstances, ain't no way. Not when Atlanta traffic, ain't no way. No um, way. But it was like a ghost town, you know, it was a ghost town because at the time it was like hard quarantine. They didn't want nobody on the on the roads unless they had to be. So I was flying. It, it was like a ghost town in there. I got there like an hour and 45 minutes. I was like, whoa, this is this is wonderful. It need to be quarantined all the time. So <laughs> I roll in there. Um, you know, I'm getting I'm getting ready, I'm doing it. They're doing the marathon taping session and everything. So I purposely bring they they said the whole thing about being in the crowd and all this other stuff, bring some clothes, you know, do stuff. So I purposely bring 
loud stuff. I like colorful stuff. I like loud stuff. I just want somebody to be able. If I if all I got to do is be in the crowd, I just want somebody to be able to point at me and be like, "Oh yeah, there he is." They can at least make me out. Mm-hmm. So I had a lemon shirt and a pineapple shirt. I'm this one, column A, column B. The pineapple shirt just happened to match what I was wearing for gear. That's the only reason I picked it. So I, I wore that. Um, Jericho wasn't even supposed to be there. That was supposed to be Excalibur. Excalibur couldn't make the flight from California to Georgia. Another circumstance. Jericho was already in the area. So he said, I'll come and do commentary. Boom. Boom. So now we've got the circumstance of a text message, the COVID era, mm-hmm. them needing people that were local to the area. Mm-hmm. I happen to pick the right shirt. Mm-hmm. There happens to be the right commentator on commentary. Mm-hmm. And when he sees it, he just runs off the joke because mm-hmm. it reminds him. It reminded him of a place that he used to go back in WCW with all the boys where they used to tear it up after it was all said and done. It was Pineapple Peace. That was the name of the spot. Um, and that was 90s WCW, so ain't no telling what was going on in there. Wasn't no Twitter, wasn't no cameras, you know, and the people oh, acting up, you know. So, you, you know, you know how it go. So, um, he saw it, and the thing is, I didn't realize what was happening until I went to, until we went for break. Everybody kept saying, like, Pineapple Pete, and kept saying stuff, because they could hear Jericho's audio back there. We can't hear him out there while we doing all that stuff that we doing. But they could hear Jericho's commentary while they watching the monitor. And people was just like, you about to be the most overdue in the company, like, as soon as this airs and everything. I'm like, what are you, what are you talking about? Like, I, I, I wasn't getting the joke. And at first, I thought somebody was being cute, just called me Pineapple Pete. You hear it one time, you hear it two times. But then people keep saying it. And I'm like, well, so what's happening? Um... Side note, Jericho's voice is his voice. Y'all be thinking that promo, some people have promo voice, and I'm going to be there on such and such. People put on their little promo voice, right? Um, which is something I try to avoid. I don't I don't like promo voice. It sounds fake. Um, Jericho's voice is his voice. That's how he talked. Oh, wow. <laughs> hey, man. What's he like? Hey, man, what's going on? Yeah. Like, like talk, you know, like, when he's loud and he's got all that going on, that's Jericho, man. So he comes up. Pineapple Pete, how you doing? And I'm like, I'm like, uh, hello, hello. You know how 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 we doing, sir? How we doing? And everything like that. He's like, yeah. He's like, he's like, yeah. He's like, this is good. he's like, this is great. This is good stuff, man. You know what I'm saying? He said, before you know it, man, you gotta have a match, man. And of course, showbiz talk. You know, we'll do lunch, all this other stuff. We should do something one day. We should get together. I'm I'm used to that. I've heard that. It's like, oh, ha ha ha. Okay, <laughs> you know, not knowing, not knowing, you know, like like down the road, but it just is what it is. So he gives me the whole breakdown about why the nickname, this, that, and the third, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, all this other stuff like that. And then, lo and behold, it took off and it went crazy. It trended, all that other stuff okay. happened and whatnot. And then um, the rest kind of came to be what it came to be. But um, a lot of that was super circumstantial, dude. Like, that's what I mean. Like, it took all these little circumstances coming together just to create that one little thing. Um, It became so huge. Right. And here's the even crazier part. Um, Not to get all Marvel Universe on you. (laughs) um, I think about alternate timelines of things all the time, right? Yep. So, um, I remember doing Talk is Jericho with him and him talking about Cody had came up to him and he was like, he said, man, it would have been awesome if we had an audience and everything like that. He said, cause we probably could have ran like a tag. It could have been like, you know, Pete and Cody versus like Jericho and Sammy and all this other stuff like that. And there's two parts of me when I hear that. Cause the first one is like, y'all, that would have ripped like that, that would, that would have ripped just to even be in that kind of situation. But at the second time, I was also like, but you also got to remember, and this is where you have to, you know, you you start, your your mind starts going up here and you like, hold on, hold on, grab the balloon and bring it back down for a minute. Um, I'm only here because of the circumstances. You're talking about if crowds were here. The, the, they're like, you can't have crowds and then have me. Right. All that stuff when it came together had it not been, I, I just would have been a guy coming out in some stuff. You wouldn't have had Jericho on commentary. There's a lot of stuff that just wouldn't have happened had it not been. So it's like, it's nice to talk about what could have been had there not been a pandemic, but I'm a product of the pandemic. Right. So am I. <laughs> hey. Hey. So am I. Get so it how you live. 
podcasting, meeting Trey, all part of it. So it changed so many people's lives. Yeah, and look how blessed you are to have him in your life, man. He's just a blessing, Very. man. Look at him. Trey is a big blessing in my life. I, he doesn't know how much I appreciate him. Yes. I him all the time. I appreciate you. <laughs> Give that man his flowers. Give that man his flowers, yes. So, sorry to have such a long no. talking point about that, but I, I believe in circumstance. I, I appreciate that. I, I think you're right. Like, for this to happen, that had to happen. For that to happen, it's a domino. Effect. There is no this without that. So as much as I want to be in my feelings sometimes about like, man, you know, like if the, them crowds were there, man, Pete, you know what I'm saying? He would, they would try to sign them, sign them three years, you know what I'm saying? Lock them down, 360 contract. I'd be like, it wouldn't, have, I, I, it just wouldn't have worked out like that. And and I and I realized that. Right. I mean, that's an amazing story. I'm so glad you told me this story because now people can hear the whole thing, how it came about circumstances y'all like just be just be prepared because you never know when it's that one little thing or like that just marriage of things that comes together that creates whatever it is that's going to be your opportunity or whatever it is there's no way i could have pictured all of that so yeah right. i was gonna ask you there's no was there any way that you would have pictured all of like just that one thing turning into such a viral thing hey i was just trying to get like i'm gonna be honest with you i was just trying to get a check and i was just happy i was wrestling because um you got to understand, I go from, like, my whole mania, mania weekend getting canceled to, like, oh, man, but guess I better put this bag down to, like, two weeks later. Two weeks later, like, hey, can you come down to do AEW? And it's, like, it's, it's the perfect summation of, like, stuff that happens in my career sometimes. Because, like, of course it takes the world shutting down for me to get a shot like that. Like, to get, like, an honest shot. Everything got to close. Everything got to close up. It's, it's one. It's one of those numbers where it's like you. Ain't, you ain't got nobody. You ain't got nobody else you could call. You ain't got nope. You ain't got nobody else you could call. <laughs> All right, go and call Shug. Then go and call. Go and call. Ah. Him, go. <laughs> you couldn't get nobody else for the track. You couldn't get nobody else for the feature. You. You. All right, man. Go. On. Go and call. Him. <laughs> it is what it is. I, I can joke like that about myself. I can joke like that about myself. I'm fine. Well, I mean. It's a good thing you can like laugh at your circumstances sometimes, but I think you don't give yourself enough credit. Man, the la you you sound like Darius Lockhart right now because he, he be <laughs> he you know he he cut the Billy D voice on like that's how Darius talked to. <laughs> he cut the Billy D voice on just be sending, "Hey brother, you know what I'm saying? You can't talk bad on yourself like that." You know he he got the night train he got the night train DJ voice when he be talking. He's like, "You can't talk bad on yourself, man. You know what I'm saying? You gotta you gotta believe in you because if you don't believe in you, you know what I'm saying? What's going on? You know nobody's gonna believe in you, right? <laughs> you be like." You'd be like, okay, man. He said, and, and coming after that word is some key sweat. Nobody. You know, like, like just night train, night train. Shout out Darius Lockhart, you know. <laughs> Darius Lockhart. Um, you've been on a winning streak this year. How's that been? A, a, a winning, huh? <laughs> I'm looking at your matches. Haven't you been winning your matches this year? Why are you laughing at me, Trey? <laughs> Information are you going off of on this? Cause, cause I did so much Google searching just to make sure. Google, Google out here lying. I, I just Google lost lying. a champ. I just lost a championship. I gotta get a rematch. I gotta get a rematch, <laughs> gotta get a rematch yes. on that now. She does. <coughs> See, this is exactly what they try to tell y'all about the internet right here. Y'all just be believing anything the internet tell you. You gotta go out there. You gotta do man research, and that's why I'm glad I'm asking you. Right, me and Suge D like this. I would know, okay? Like I, <laughs> I see him. If I see him every day. I see him every day. He get on my last damn nerve, but me and him know what's going on. Okay, we t we talk every day, every day. <laughs> him, yeah, I think uh, one of his, he won a tag match up there in the Don Klausloff arena. Uh, he faced Paragon. He didn't win that. Um, and then the show before that was for the Paradigm title on the, under that UWFI mm -hmm. crap. Oh, and, 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 and old buddy, yeah, old buddy, old buddy took me. He took me for what's mine. I'm gonna get my shot October the 14th, and we gonna we gonna rectify the situation. No, no child left behind. We are gonna rectify the situation. <laughs> well, yeah. what's been your favorite match so far? Of your like, if you can remember um, from your career, favorite opponent. I think every match I've ever had. 
at Title Wrestling in England, like um, I was fortunate enough that he he cut me a DVD of like everything from um that time. That was really special because you really seeing somebody figure himself out like in a very foreign place. Like I'm going over and nobody, you going from just nobody knowing you to like you holding a building down and um you know you're not from there but they make you a part of there and. It was just really special. They were giving me all sorts of opponents. It's the kind of it's the kind of thought I've I've wanted around me when it comes to my career for a long time. Because I've always told people, and I've, I look at myself as a very versatile type of performer, but I've always told people I can carry the weight if you give it to me. I don't care what it is, I can carry the weight if you if you actually give it to me. And that was literally a company where it was like, well, here, like we need we need you to take the title overseas. We're going to give you all these different kinds of opponents month after month after month after month. We're expecting you to bring on the best match. The The title championship is always the last match. It don't matter what go before you or what go after you. So sometimes you got the super mega NXT UK versus such and such guy that they have, and you still got to be the last match, and you still got to bring it home. So I I love the pressure. I thrived in the pressure. I love those people. Um, God, it's like... Hard to say. It, it's it just meant a lot to me because um especially during that time when i was doing all those trips to england it started feeling more like home than home did just because mm-hmm. they were willing to just be like okay we know he's got something so let's go ahead let's go ahead and let him show it and let him embrace that and let that be the full him when he's doing it and sometimes i think even now i still have problems trying to show people that i guess but like you know we still move we still push through that we still try to figure out what's going on but um i i do have to say the last few years have been fulfilling just because i'm doing it the way i want to do it i'm not doing it because this is the style that you have to wrestle or i'm so caught up in trying to get a contract or this that and the third i'm just out here having a good time and then sometimes some good stuff come back to me hey most like i Things coming back to you. Uh, you found that 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 match you had with John Moxley. You thought you said you had lost. All right, so let's talk about that. In two thousand ten. <laughs> no, let's. I mean, I mean, let's talk about it. This, this is my first time talking about it. Two thousand ten FIP Peterson Cup, right? Mm-hmm. Um, me versus John Moxley. So there's definitely a story behind that too, but. Let me let me let me tell you. Let me hold on. I'm I'm on the same website that she claims she did her research on of this winning streak that I supposedly had. <laughs> Damn, I'm never yeah. gonna live this down. You'll be all right. You be all right. You got to ask me about it first. You know, I like to see it with my eyes. You know what I'm saying? Before you believe she it said way. she said a win a winning streak. Where where? <laughs> oh my god. Uh, let me see. You you good? You good, my dear? Let me see. Jeff Peterson Memorial Cup. All right. So this was 2010, and I'm and I'm and I'm not gonna front with you. I feel like I could be real with y'all. This is uh, I've had to make peace with that. So you actually caught me at a good time because I had to make peace with that. I'm glad I told you to wait till this week to talk because I didn't know all that was gonna happen. Because if you had caught me before all that, or Lord forbid, you caught me when I saw the match, uh, you you wouldn't want to be around me because when I be having my alone moments, it it, it gets deep. Mm-hmm. Uh. I look back to 2010, and this is the first time that I've ever seen this match. 12 years, I literally found it just combing posts on Tumblr. Somebody told me that something told me to just go on Tumblr at like one in the morning, and just going through posts, I found it. Um, the full match, great, incredible quality, all that other stuff like that, and I'll probably get around to posting it at some point. But um, that's like one of those matches where it's like I tell people I had it. And it's just <laughs> no, nah, like you know what I'm saying. Like, yeah. like you, you scored, you scored twenty on Michael Jordan. Stop, stop. Like, yeah, Jordan came through for a little street ball. We did. He did the little pickup game. You know what I'm saying? I came through. I hit the little. No, nah, they, they think I'm. They think I'm playing. Like they think I'm lying about it. And um, like, I'm, or I'm not lying, but telling a tall tale, right? And 2010 was a really special time for me, but that was also a really different version of me. Um. If we had to give a third thing that I would tell people about wrestling, love wrestling, 
do what you have to do for wrestling, but wrestling is very consuming. You have to make sure that your life, when you're not in them tights and them boots, is as good, if not close to as good when you're in the ring. Because a lot of people neglect the outside stuff. And that ring stuff ain't supposed to last forever. It's supposed to be those moments while you have it, et cetera, et cetera. But you got to come home to something, whether it's family or pets or other projects or things of that nature. And for the longest time, especially then, I was full speed ahead. Um, I messed up a lot of relationships because I was always like, uh, you know, romantic and otherwise, because I was just so dead ahead about wrestling. You know, I didn't go to my own. I didn't go to my own high school graduation. I didn't go to my own college graduation because I had to I had to wrestle. You know, that's that's how I felt. And um, I remember Peterson Cup came along and um, old girl that I was dating at the time, you know, she made plans and all this other stuff. I was down for him. But I got that call for Peterson Cup. Um, I canceled. I didn't I didn't ask her. I just canceled because it's the Peterson Cup. It's important. And um, I looked at the field that's in the Peterson Cup. So I got it up. Right. So check this out. This was the, the Peterson Cup field in 2010. Like I felt like I, I was like. Yo, A.R. Fox, Eric Cannon, um, Brad Attitude, Brad Allen. At the time, he was looking like he was supposed to be like a big prospect. He's still like a stalwart in North Carolina, though. Chris Dickinson, uh, Chris Gray, Craig Classic, two really good guys that could have been doing more. Frightmare from Shakara, Grizzly, Wood, Grizzly Redwood, Jake Manning, um, Jigsaw. Y'all might remember from Ring of Honor, big Shakara dude. John Moxley, Lince Dorado. Mm. Rich Swan, mm. um, Scott Reed, who was a prospect, but it, it didn't really go anywhere. And then there's me. So at the time in 2010, this was looking like, yo, uh, these are your guys that you need to watch for. And I just felt honored that like I was in that, uh, I was really in that, in that pool of like, yo, y'all really letting me be a part of this tournament right now um so i had my first match it was against scott reed i was shocked i was shocked i was even going over but i went over right so then of course they don't tell you they don't give you the tournament brackets they tell you what the matches are after the the quarters are out the way like the like the you know i guess the qualifiers or whatever so the guy gets on the mic and starts announcing the matches right it's such and such versus such and such no no no, no. They're doing all that Sugar Dunkerton versus John Moxley, and I'm like, because <laughs> even in 2010, let let me let me set the stage. Even in 2010, Moxley had it like that. Yeah. Wow. No, nobody was expecting him to get signed, but as far mm-hmm. as like, yo, guys to watch on the Indies, Moxley had it like that. And if he hadn't got signed, he probably would have been like a Godfather on the Indies. Like he would have been, he would have had it like that. Um. So I was like, oh, you know, I remember going back to the hotel that night. I was like, man, I got to, I got to wake up early. I got to hit these sprints. I got, I got to do all this. We about to go in, man. This is about to be, this is about to be crazy, you know. Mox rolls up on me before we all get ready to go to the hotel. <laughs> A, an occurring theme in this podcast. That's how he really talked. No, that's not a promo voice with Mox. That's how he really talked. Oh. So, so he roll up. So he roll up, and he's like, he's like, shug, <laughs> like he's got a little deal. Like I like, he's like, shug. He's like, so it's me and you tomorrow, right? And I'm like, I'm like, yeah, man. You know, I'm really excited. You know, I, I'm, I'm, and I, I let him know. I was like, I'm familiar with your game. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm amped up. Like I'm about to step up. So the thing about it at the time is, especially at the time, you know, I'm a comedy guy. I'm known for being a really good comedy guy, but I like to think, yo, I can wrestle. So you got to, you got to balance that out because otherwise they just think you just there for laughs all the time and they don't give you other matches to get outside that box. So I'm like, yeah, I got to get outside the box on this one. So I'm coming in with the mindset. All right, we about to go in. We about to bang. We about to run hands. We about to do all this. I'm, this is going to be my coming out party. And he's like, bro, he said, it'd be easy. We ain't going to do shit, man. It's going to be great. And it's like, he's like, but promise me something. Bring the basketball. And I'm like, I got to bring the basketball. It just comes with it. He's like, nah, but bring the basketball, okay? He said, you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. Bring the basketball, bro. All right. And then it's like it's like that Prince thing where he just disappears into the mist or whatever it is. Like, nah. He was, no, but he was like that even on the indies. Like, he wasn't really around a lot of people. 
he he makes his own space. Like he's a cool dude. He's he's jovial. He, he'll he'll you know like when he's in a good mood, all that other stuff. He'll joke or whatever it is. But he's very locked in and he's very to himself when he wants to be, which I respect. Cause it's not in a disrespectful matter. It's just. I'm not trying to be around a bunch of people all the time. And he was like that on the indies. And he was even like that um, in AEW. Like, he always tripped me out because he's the one guy you would never find in the locker room. And it's like he would never show up till like 10 minutes till it was time to do something. It's like, we've been looking for Moxley all the for Because anybody see John, we're looking for him for this promo. And then he just disappeared. Out, he just, you know, he just. All right, so what are you guys trying to do? You know what I'm saying? And then just one take it. Like, Ace, it's like, uh, do you know where you want to film? We'll do it right here. And then he fucking promo of the year and then just disappear. You will never see him. I remember one time I went to brush my teeth and he just emerges from like the medical room. Nobody else was in the medical room. Like he just emerges in the medical So he'd been changing in the medical room the whole time and just been there and nobody knew he was there. And he just shows up. He's like, what's up? You know, blah, blah, blah. And it just disappears. So I'll be believing it when he does his entrance where he just comes through. For all we know, he just like he heard his music and just showed up just and just like go to work. That's that's not a that's not a front. Like, that's just how you get down. So Crazy. we have the match. Right. And um, two things about Moxley, even in 2010. I love got. wrestling, and you love wrestling, then we love wrestling. We love wrestling. We love wrestling. You're not here, you're missing out. Is this show? Is this show? 